What's going on guys? Patrick here. Moving on to another question. So if A, 4, and 0, and B, 0, and 9 are points on the X and Y axis respectively, we got to find the coordinates of a point P on the X axis such that the magnitude of the vector PA is equal to the magnitude of the vector PB. So to start this question off, I would recommend drawing all of this on a diagram. So let's plot these coordinates. So 4 and 0 point A, let's say it's like right here. And then we got point B, 0, 9. So that's like right there. And then we have to find the coordinates of another point P on the x-axis such that the magnitudes of those two vectors equal. So let's maybe put that point here. So let's say this is point P. Now this point P can be anywhere on the x-axis, but let's just assume it's here for now. And so if this point is going to be on the x-axis, then we know the format of the coordinate is going to be x and 0, some kind of x value. We don't know what it is. We're going to be solving for that. But we do know the y value is going to be 0 because it's on the x-axis. So we have to find this point P such that the magnitude of vector PA, so the magnitude of this vector right there, is going to equal the magnitude of this vector here. Now right now in my drawing, these magnitudes don't look equal. This uh, vector looks a lot longer than this one. But once we solve for that x value, we'll know exactly where on the x-axis that's going to be. But let's just assume it's over here for now. So what we can do at this point is we can find expressions for the magnitude of PB and the magnitude of PA. So let's start with this vector PB here. How do we find the magnitude? Well, it's always the square root of what? the difference in the x value squared, so x minus 0 squared, plus the difference in the y value squared, so 0 minus 9 squared. And then for PA, it's going to be x minus 4 squared, plus 0 minus 0 squared is just 0. So really, it's just this for the magnitude of PA. And now notice that we can simplify all of this. So um, x minus 0 squared is just x squared. 0 minus 9 is negative 9. Negative 9 squared is positive 81. Like that. And this is just going to be square rooted. And then uh, for this one, let's just keep it like that for now. Technically, it should just be x minus 4 because uh, when you square something or take something to the power of 2 and then you square root it, well, those exponents are going to cancel out. But let's just keep that square root here for now. So we have to find that x value where these two magnitudes are going to equal, right? So we got magnitude of PA has to equal the magnitude of PB. So if we write out these magnitudes on their respective sides, so the magnitude of PA is x minus 4 squared, magnitude of PB is uh, square root of x squared plus 81. Notice we have a square root on both sides, so we can technically just square both sides, get rid of that square root. So we'll have x minus 4 squared left over here, and over here we'll have x squared plus 81 left. And that's why initially I didn't want to get rid of that square root. I would have rather got rid of it here, because technically we could have had just x minus 4 here, but then we would have x minus 4 equals square root of x squared plus 81, and we would have to get rid of this square root. So we would have to square both sides. So this square root would go away, and then this x minus 4 would have a squared. So we would end up here anyway. So either way works. And now notice we just have an equation here that we have to solve. So we can expand this. So if we FOIL this out, x minus 4 times x minus 4, we'll end up with x squared 
minus 8x plus 16 equals x squared plus 81. And then continuing this up here, uh, let's bring all the uh, x's on one side, all the numbers on one side. So notice the x squareds are going to cancel out. When we bring this over, we'll have x squared minus x squared. So that goes away. The negative 8x, let's keep on the left side. And then we'll have 81 minus 16. When we bring the 16 over, it becomes negative. 81 minus 16 gives us 65. So to isolate for the x, divide both sides by negative 8. So we end up with negative 65 over 8. And that's actually our x value. Notice this x value is negative. And over here, this point, even though we kept this x value general, because it's on this side of the y-axis, we're assuming it's positive. But in fact, it's actually negative. It's going to be somewhere here. So this point p is going to be negative 65 over 8 and 0. And that actually, even though this graph is not uh, fully to scale, that actually looks a lot better because then the magnitudes are going to be somewhat closer in length at least. When we drew it from there, we can tell that the magnitudes were, um, were not equal for sure, but at this point, they look a little bit more equal in magnitude. Again, this is not fully to scale here. But anyway, the point P is negative 65 over 8 and 0. So it's going to be on the left side of the y-axis. And that there is your final answer to that question.